Yesterday, over at The Athletic, Brody Miller had a nice story looking at some of the uh, behind-the-scenes stories of the uh, LSU championship run. A little anecdotes, kind of fun stuff, nothing nothing, nothing ground-shattering. Uh, but there was a great story about Joe Burrow getting in a fight uh, with Jacoby Stevens during, uh, during a practice. From that, you saw a lot of the uh, the stories come, and it was he even uh, went over to Twitter as uh, Jacoby Stevens and Jamar Chase were going back and forth. Chase went on to Twitter to clarify some of the things in the story. Uh, Stevens said to clear up, uh, I did not intentionally wrap up and tackle Joe. I went up and knocked a pass down and ran into him in the process. He also didn't grab my face mask afterwards, but I still have much earned respect for the greatest college football player of all time in Jamar Chase. Chimes in and doing saying, his best Leonard Fournette here. Yeah, I had to beat your ass for that. <laughs> I still had to beat you. That sounds like maybe a face mask was grabbed. Uh, Jacoby comes back with uh, tried, is implying that Jamar tried to beat his ass, and then Jamar says, "See you in a month." Which I guess, I guess, like we said, that we will. I mean, less than a month, Jordy. We're talking about these guys being back on campus potentially in 10, 11 days. Yeah. Whenever whenever that is. And there's going to be a big call this morning for the SEC. The Southeastern Conference is going to have a conference call with all their uh, universities talking about the league stance after yesterday's NCAA Division I Council voted to allow voluntary on-campus athletic activities to resume in football, men's and women's basketball starting on June 1st. They're just under two weeks away. Uh, the NCAA has said that uh, if your conference and or your state allows uh, activity, then the NCAA is going to be okay with it. As we said, the Southeastern Conference will have a big conference call coming up this morning with all the universities stating their stance on what the policy will look like for the SEC. Louisiana is in phase one, so which would uh, would put uh, LSU um, – a, a, as a school that would be able to participate in the voluntary activities that could begin as early as uh, as June first, according to the NCAA, I would imagine that the SEC would be all in, saying that yeah. they are uh, that they're ready to play and going to open up the campus and open up the facilities to allow student athletes back in from a voluntary standpoint. Yeah, look, I, w- I would think so for a multitude of reasons. Uh, I like like this is all we always talk about. This is just finding that new normal uh, and. Establishing the protocol of you know getting these guys back on. Do you try to cut down on physical contact, mass, whatever, like whatever you got to do. But yeah, if you just look at where things are trending, I think kind of opinion wise in this part of the country, and and just where things are trending numbers wise and based on the science, and yeah, I think I think you can uh, reopen, and we'll just try to figure out what that looks like. And if you have step back at time, you figure out how to try to stop those in the future. But sure. I mean, look, there's too much money at stake. We said it from the beginning, there's too much money at stake for it not to happen. So yeah, I expect today's sec call to just kind of be a, you know, we're going to be very cautious, but we're, we're thumbs up. We're going to go forward with this. And, 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 and that's cool. And, and I'm, I'm interested to see how it ends up working out, which would begin the discussion on what the college football season would look like. Because once you start to open the facilities and begin preparation and start the ball rolling downhill, then you're, you're aiming to, uh, towards some st- start date uh, of games in the fall. And as we said inside headlines, Ohio State's athletic director, Gene Smith, said on Wednesday that their athletic department has gone through several social distancing models to consider having fans in the stands at the game this fall. Ohio State, the horseshoe, holds over 100,000, very similar to Tiger Stadium. And he said that uh, a lot of the models that they've looked at uh, would hold 20,000 to 22,000 fans per game. You want to talk about logistics now. How do you decide on who's going to be entered, who's going to be allowed? You start talking about uh, administration. You start talking about faculty. You start talking about media members, um, people. I I, want to say that Ohio State kind of did say that they – the idea would be to give it to like students and faculty and family members first, uh, but you can bet that the boosters, right, are going to find their their way in line right after that. Uh, it's kind of similar to the Disney question that I posed. I wonder um, if you do have like a twenty five percent capacity thing. Is that a classic supply and demand situation where the scarcity drives up the price or? Or or or, or are people less willing to pay a lot to go to games because 
well, first off, maybe they are a bit concerned for going out there, but then also like it's it's not going to be quite the same in terms of the energy in the building. Like there's a part of me that'd be like, well, it'd be really nice, right? You could spread out, no lines anywhere, get your food, be kind of a chill experience. But that's the thing, it would be chill. It wouldn't be that just crazy mob mentality. Like when 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 Tiger Stadium has 100,000 in it and everybody's really locked in and there's a big player's room, there's something like primal in your DNA that gets drawn out of you when that crowd starts going crazy. And to me, that's always been a lot of a lot of the price of admission, like that 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 feeling, the community feeling, the hugging, the high fiving. And so I just I wonder what the demand will be, uh, Sons. And I I look, I I think it's going to be very high, obviously, because people love football, and especially with LSU, people are going to be wanting to watch the defending national champions, however they can. For as intrigued as you may be on on what a theme park would look at what would look like at twenty percent capacity. I am ecstatic about the, 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 the thought of seeing a game for just a month, if it's just a month, because I think at this point right now that the models show that for the first part of the season that fan interaction will be limited and or could be suspended at all. So there, there may be no fans and there may be a ratio of fans in there that's a small percentage. I would love to see a game in Tiger Stadium where just <laughs> well, the elements, because where, where it's a little bit of scrimmage. <laughs> it, it, it's a, it's a very much a scrimmage. The, the LSU where, spring game has everything your heart can desire. <laughs> where you can hear the interaction between coach and player. You yeah. can hear some of the interaction on the sidelines between coaches and coaches. You think they would pump in crowd noise? Uh, yes. I for think the, there would be some the sort TV. of codified crowd noise. Because that's the thing. You do have to make rules around it, though, right? Can't be random. Like you have to have okay, this is the acceptable decimal uh, decibel level oh, you can sure. get to, and if you're the home team, then you can play this when you're on defense versus like this when you're on mm-hmm. offense. You got to come up with guidelines, and then that becomes kind of funny. Like, does Vanderbilt have a lower decibel level than like a Swamp or Tiger Stadium, or is this now the loudest and toughest environment that Vandy will ever be? Because they'll they'll be able to pump up their crowd noise more than like they could in real life. LSU picked up another commitment. Uh, in recruiting T, and they are on fire, man. And I, I think when you look at the state of Louisiana, uh, there, there, there's a handful of prospects that, that should start to tumble here over the next couple of weeks, months, and I think LSU has prime targets on, uh, on those guys. Mason Smith down in Thibodeau, down in the, in the River Parishes, is the number one prospect in the state. He's one of the top prospects in the country, and LSU's got a great relationship with Smith and should be into it uh, right at the end. Yesterday... Uh, they picked up a big-time player from that same area, from the River Parishes, uh, in Savion Jones, who is a, uh, a, a 2021 defensive end out of St. James. Robert Valdez has done a tremendous job of bringing the St. James High School program uh, back to relevance. As last year, they went 15-0, and magical season, state championship run. Jones is one of the stalwarts on defense. Right now, he's the top-10 prospect. Shea and those guys have him number eight in the state in the top 10. He's a six foot five, 250 pound defensive end who had 13 sacks and 25 hurries last year. Pretty good. Uh, talking to some of the people over at LSU, Bo Pelini uh, was really high on Jones and compares him a little bit to another legend out of the, uh, the River Parishes uh, area and Tyson Jackson, somebody that's big. High praise. Can, I mean, Jackson was the number somebody. two. Was he the number two pick in the I draft? Think three. Uh, I could, really could be wrong there. I want to say three to the Chiefs. But either way, T.Y. was a he, he was a monster. Also a player that Bo Pelini is uh, intimately familiar with, given his time together at LSU. 